Evening, folks. Welcome to the view for the match day preview. Another one for Legion United versus Stoke. There's more games than there is days in the week at this point, but not a bad thing. Uh, delighted to have Andrew back with us. Andy, how are you doing, mate? You well? Very well, thank you. Yep, another another game. It's relentless this championship lark. We're into game 36 as we're very, very close uh, to the business end of the season. And it, it's coming to crunch time very shortly for, for all clubs in, in all leagues, especially uh, Legion United in the championship. Yeah, yeah, we've got a chance to put the demons of the weekend away and exercise some old demons again tomorrow night as well, which would be nice to see. Um, and how did, what were your thoughts on the Huddersfield game? I wanted to catch up with you on this I, one. I thought it was the kind of keenly contested Yorkshire derby. I thought Leeds looked a little bit flat first half, which probably was going to happen because they've been on a magnificent run. Uh, I thought Huddersfield nullified us, and I thought Huddersfield probably deserved to take the lead through Mikel Helleke at the end of the first half. Jonathan Hogg rightly was sent off. You could kind of see what he was trying to do to, to Junior Firpo. And then it was kind of up to Leeds to, to try and break them down. And sometimes it's quite difficult to play against 10 men. It's not you think you're going to score three or four goals against 10 men. It doesn't always happen that way. They got the equal through Patrick Bamford. Uh, Chris Summerall was very unlucky to, to hit the outside of the post late on. But in the end, I thought it was probably a fair result for both clubs. I thought Andre, uh, Arnold Brighton, I think I pronounced his, his name right there, the Huddersfield new manager, showed some good signs. And um, I always say how I see it. And I thought a one all draw is probably a fair result. And I don't think neither side probably deserved to win the game. And neither side probably deserved to lose the game. And it could be uh, a big point uh, on the board come the end of the season. And there's, there's still 11 games to go. And we're still unbeaten in 2024 in the league. That's the thing. <clears throat> We're still unbeaten. We haven't lost since the turn of the year. That is still, <laughs> still the way it is. And if anything, yes, Ipswich won. And yes, Southampton managed yeah. to dig themselves out of jail. But we still are one point closer to Leicester than we were before we kicked off on Saturday. Which, yeah. as Daniel Farkas says today, win all the rest of our home games and draw all of the away games. We've got 96 points, which means you're I'm probably... Be yeah. in a decent position. You'll be very unlucky if you don't win promotion. Now six points. The only one team in the history of the the, the second tier, and in, when it's been uh, three points for a win, a Sunderland that I think hit ninety point ninety one points in ninety seven ninety eight, failed to go up and lost in the play final to Charlton. So you'd be very very unlucky. And plus the fact I think Ipswich have to play Southampton, Leicester have to play Southampton. The season's nowhere near over. I think Russell Martin, I saw uh, after the Birmingham victory for Southampton at to the St Andrews on uh, Saturday, said there's still a quarter of the season nearly to go. And he's right. There is there is 33 points. We're not left with one game to go at the end of the season. It's going to twist and turn. And if you said to me after the first two games of the season, Leeds would be on 73 points after 35 games, you'd snap the hands off. And even after Christmas, when we lost back to back games against West Brom and Preston, or sorry, say the other way around, and you say we'd, we'd go on a, a winning run of nine games and draw one, you, you thought, wow. And the funny thing is, yeah, had we drawn to. Uh, had we drawn to Leicester and beaten Huddersfield, everyone said, perfect. But because we beat Leicester and drew to Huddersfield, everyone thinks it's. It, it's not a good result, but for me, four points. You win your home games, draw your away games. Uh, you're going to be there or thereabouts at the end of the season. And you know what? I think if you go back to the first half of the season, there were similarities to some performances. I think Leeds have a, a, a allergic reaction to the 19th spot. I think when we played Stoke <laughs> the first half of the season, they were 19. I think we played Rotherham, they were 19. So there's something, there's something about that position, but there were similarities to some of the, the things that we got caught on early in the season, yeah. which were got bullied a little bit, got yeah. kicked up in the air. The younger players reacted as younger players tend to react. Like, Willie got a bit salty, you know, mm. gave away a couple of silly free kicks. Got to mature in those areas. And these games yeah. will help them mature. Like, they've had it their own way for quite a while now. As Daniel Farka says, they've been used to winning. They got a reality check. You know, a team yeah. that had clear tactics to upset them. You know, keep the ball as... Break the game up as much as you can. Don't let Leeds get into the rhythm the flow. And they didn't. Leeds played a very slow tempo game. And mm. go back again to the start of the season when Leeds were at their absolute worst was when they were stuck in this slow, methodical <laughs> tempo and trying to force the door down by doing the same things over and over again. I think a lot of that showed its showed its its head again against Huddersfield, but we didn't lose. We're early yeah. on in the season, we'd have dropped three points there completely. Yeah. So we still managed to pick up something. Farke will be able to address these issues, and they've yeah. got a quick fire game as players say. When you lose a game, you want a game quickly to get out of your system. And when you win a game, you want a game quickly to keep your momentum going. So they'll be fine. They'll be fine. We'll get into the form guide, the team news and all that stuff um, as well. Um, Farkas comments today, we've already talked about the, the points. Mm -hmm. 
Commandant. Very relaxed, very calm. Yeah. No big deal. Yeah. This is a manager that's been there, done that, got the t shirt, won the championship twice. He knows what he's doing. You're not going to go through from January to May winning every game. It's, it's practically impossible. We've been on an absolutely magnificent run. We're still on a magnificent run. And drawing one game isn't going to be the be on end all. There's 11 games to go, as I keep saying, and I use this terminology, twists and turns, and there will be. There's no gimme at this stage of the season, and no game is easy. Huddersfield are fighting for their lives, uh, and they've got 11 big games coming up, uh, and it'll be interesting to see how they react in their next game. And every game between now and the end of the season is going to be tough. And I still maintain Leeds will, will clinch promotion by the end of the season. I think they'll actually go up automatically, just because we're two points behind at this stage of the season, in my opinion, doesn't mean as much. If it was two points with one game to go, and we're going to the Southampton game, and it's which had the two-point cushion, then it's a different kettle of fish. 33 mm. points is a lot of points. And suddenly, by Friday night, it could all change again. So, I'm still very positive. Yes, yeah. it was disappointing when you get all three points, but we're a week for the post away from getting all three points. And we've had a lot of travelling over the last few weeks with games all around the other side of the country, like you like to Plymouth away, Bristol City away as well, uh, Swansea away, and we've had some very, very good results. And if, if you said to me we'd go on a, a run of 28 from 30 points, I'd have said you'd probably incline cookie land a little bit because it, it, you don't tend to see it happen. It's, they've equaled a club record of nine straight league wins that's been held since 1931. That is magnificent. And the almost 100 are, years. Exactly. Almost 100 years that exactly. record has been in pace. And that is magnificent for what the players have achieved. And there's still more to come starting at home to Stoke City tomorrow night at Allen Road. Yeah, just just coming from War Piglet. Some Leeds fans want us to lose so they can say told you so. There are a group of them out there. They are the reactionary, I call them the clickbait fans. Mm. Um, yeah, anytime, you know, hey, overreactive headlines get yeah. your views. And unfortunately, yeah. some people lean into that a little bit too much for me. Two very good points made here. Um, John has said three games ago you'd have taken seven points knowing you had Leicester. You know, that Correct. was the one you thought we'll drop points to Leicester, or, you know. Yeah. 100% on that and also um, Acom Tony has said five points behind Leicester and three goal difference why complaining yes. exactly yeah. think about where we were before Christmas correct and everyone yeah. said to me if you drew as I said earlier if you drew to Leicester and beat others fields it's a great return it just has to be the other way around and I'm, exactly. I'm very positive. I've got a game in front of the lights tomorrow night at Ellen Road. We saw what the, the reaction was like against Leicester City like a week ago last Friday. Wonderful scenes, wonderful atmosphere. And I'm sure they'll be up for it tomorrow night against the Stoke City side that are, again, fighting for lives along the other table. Yep. Gail Davis says it. Gail, Gail Davis says it here. It says it here as well. 28 points out of 30. It's not good enough. Imagine <laughs> saying that, isn't it? Uh, I hate to take the joke out of that, Gail. Yeah, it's it's nuts. It's nuts. Um. There is another one I want to actually bring up. Uh, Lord uh, Shogarath, Shogarath has said, Leicester's FFP looking a bit suspect. Now, we're going to talk about that as well. It, it's yes. come out tonight. Now, it's from The Sun. Mm. And everyone knows my deal with The Sun and a couple of other things. Pinch of salt territory <laughs> is the first thing just to be to be safe. Allegedly is the, the safe word here. Yes. Um, <clears throat> allegedly, Leicester have broken the FFP, have, have exceeded the £105 million losses for the last three years, ending in December this year, 2023. I think it's never just gone. There could be a points deduction waiting for them should they get back to the Premier League if that's found to be the case. There's also been mentioned that there is also a potential breach of the time period leading into the Championship as well. Yeah. However... Because they were relegated, they don't need to show their financials until yeah. next December when they possibly won't be in the EFL anymore. So it probably, more than likely, similar to Aston Villa, won't affect them this year in the championship. Mm -hmm. But should they stay in the championship, it will affect them next year. I talked before about Aston Villa have a financial fair play breach from the championship or from the EFL hanging over them. If Should they ever come back down again, it's waiting for them. So there yeah. isn't that connection between the two divisions, Correct. unfortunately. Yeah. So, But it will, when they do go up this year, will be countered, will be counted into the FFP Spot year for, um, yeah. for next year as well. So it's an interesting, what's your take on what you've heard or seen it's, so far? It's, it's a tricky one, isn't it? Because obviously we don't know the ins and outs. It might be unfounded. If it is true, and again, we use the term allegedly of what's uh, 
uh, what's been said in the, in the Sun newspaper today. It'll be very interesting to see what happens if they do go up. Now, if they've spent beyond their means, I don't think that's quite fair. I think is is a good way to say it. Look, this is just my opinion. I might be right. I might be wrong. I, I don't know the ins and outs of it. Uh, it'll be very interesting to see what comes out of it come the end of the season or if they do come into the Premier League. The thing is, if they do go up into the Premier League, they're going to start. And if they're found guilty, they'll end up on minus points. If they don't go up, I'm guessing they'll be on minus points next season. So, yeah, it, it, FFP is a very stri- stricky sub- st- sticky subject, is it for me to say. And you've got to spend within your means. And that's if we do go up, please God, we do. We have to spend within our means next season and not go over the FFP rules. So, yeah, it, it, it's hard to know what to say, really. We don't know what's going on with the transfer of the Leicester City. It'll be mm. very interesting to see come the end of the season how it all plays out. And I think similar to the the Everton cases and the Nottingham Forest cases, which I think are due to be heard in the next few weeks, this is something that could run and run. And the problem you've got is, especially with the Everton Nottingham Forest cases, it's got to be done by June the 30th because that's when the the AGM for the Premier League has to be done for next season for us 24-25 for the Championship. It, it, it's so difficult and it'll be interesting to see what the sources of that story are. Now, if they have come out and they've spent above the means, then they'll have to accept the punishment because if 23 teams in the league can do it and stick to the FFP rules, why can't Leicester City do it? That will be the frustration. And I know Leeds fans will come out and say, well, it'll affect us, etc., etc." If you're a Leeds United fan like we are tonight, just go and win the league and it doesn't matter. Or go and win promotion, it doesn't matter. But yeah, I think it's going to be a story. It's sweeter, isn't it? Yeah. It's a little bit sweeter if you go and beat them and you're like, well, we didn't break the rules. We've done it on our own merits. Yeah. Yeah. You broke the rules and you still didn't do it. Like there's yeah. a little bit of, I've seen people say, and, and some people on my channel have said it, and I, I do get it to a degree of like, feck it, we should just spend our way out of the division and avoid the, the penalty. Mm-hmm. But Given Leeds' history with spending wildly when we didn't mm-hmm. have money, and we do have a bit more money than we had in the past, but given that, I never want to ever see Leeds go down an irresponsible route of spending again because you never know what's going to happen. Like, it'd be just our luck that if we did spend our way out of this division, the EFL and Premier League would come to an agreement next year where points would cross over yeah, and we'd no, end up no. with a gentleman point. point. Yeah. So you're, you're better off just to play by the rules, do yeah. it the right way. It's called fair play for a reason. Yeah. And win, the, win it on the merits because... It, We've said before, if you win it with that hanging over your head, there'll always be a caveat beside the name. There'll always yeah. be a caveat saying they yeah. won the league, but pro financial fair play roles to do it. You look at the Everton situation as well, the, the, the key language that was used in the in the the appeal decision was gained a sporting advantage by breaching yeah. financial fair play. And that's where the legal cases come from. That's where they can go after. I saw someone during the week tell me that that's not the case because it's in bad faith. But if you breach the rules, it's no longer in bad faith. It's now in good yeah. faith because it's public information, it's public knowledge. But Look, people will, will say left and right, but it's for me, look after ourselves, do our do our own jobs. Yeah. Go in the game of football. We've beaten them twice this year. We've beaten them yeah. twice this year. Yeah. And they broke the rules. So we just gotta sort our record out against the lower teams in the league yeah. because our record against the top teams has been phenomenal outside of yeah. Southampton. Yes. So, yeah. I think it's one Point that's it. gonna run and run over the coming months so, and it yeah. might even go into the summer months. The appeals as well. Yeah. Yeah, and it just, it, it's where does it end with the appeals and this? I mean, that's what's interesting with Everton and Nottingham Forest, that it's all got to be heard by the end of June because the Premier League season has to get ready for, for next season as well and it could cause complete yeah. chaos. But I think, as I said, as you said there, from a Leeds United perspective, concentrate on ourselves, go and win promotion, and it doesn't really matter. To me, it doesn't matter if we win the league or finish second, the aim is to get out of this league. Yeah. Um, on the fan that fell from the top stand, there was someone put a comment in my chat on last week of a video <laughs> who was complete, who was completely wrong by the way what he said and um, the last i heard was the injuries were not life-threatening and not life-altering so that's that was the last mm-hmm. update i heard so <clears throat> fingers crossed he's fine yes. or he will be fine he'll get better fingers crossed but it was an, it was a nasty fall and, and i just hope he, he gets better soon so yeah okay let's start talking about some football um yeah. actual football let's get into the f- uh, form guide that we've got we'll get the good stuff out of the way leads Unbeaten in 10 games since the turn of the year. Boy, our last five games, four wins and a draw. Still excellent. Th- third in the table now, five points behind Leicester, which was six points before we kicked off on Saturday. So that's got smaller. Yeah. And two points behind Ipswich in second, three points ahead of Southampton, who just crawled over the line in their bellies at the weekend to, to nick a 4-3 win against 10-man Birmingham as well. So in the 99th minute that that winner came. So... 
these teams are all scoring lots of goals, but they're scoring them late, but they're conceding a lot of goals as well, both sides. So there's wobbles there. Stoke, as we come into this game, 22nd in the league, currently scrapping for their life. Steve Schumacher side, two wins and three defeats in their last five games. They did beat Leeds 1-0 the last time out, so this is our opportunity stats to exercise some demons. Yeah, it was a it was a disappointing performance, wasn't it, back in midweek uh, against Stoke City. It was just one of them defeats that we probably didn't really get going, but we bounced back very, very quickly from it. Uh, yeah, and we know Paddy missed a penalty, but he had the balls to step up and take the penalty. So, yeah, it's an opportunity. We've got three games now against sides in the sort of wrong end of the table. As you say, we, we have tend to struggle a little bit against these sides. We've got obviously Stoke City on I mean, 22nd. Friday night, we go to Sheffield Wednesday, where Danny Roll has done a brilliant job at Hills, but we'll obviously talk about that later in the week. And then a week on Sunday, we've got Millwall and uh, uh, Neil Harris coming back to Swellin Road. So three opportunities to gain some points. And I think we'll have a better idea going into the international break where the season lies. Yeah, by that point, if my maths does me right, we'll have played 38 games and we really will be into the business end of the season. So, yeah, opportunity to right some wrongs from the disappointment of the Bet365 early in the season. Yeah, the, the um, I was talking about games coming up and Neil Harris's Millwall. I'm kind of glad we've had that Huddersfield warm-up because that's what it's going to be like when we play against a Neil Harris Millwall side. Yes. That is... Any yeah. silly free kicks inside the halfway line will mean bodies in the box. Look what they yeah. did to Southampton as well. Yes. So we've got to learn from the Huddersfield game is the dry run for what to expect that we're going to get from a Neil Harris yeah. Millwall side because yes. it's predictable with how he will play. So Definitely. get ready for it. We've got plenty of games to turn this around. And it, I know we look at the tape, at the, the, the fixtures this week. I think you, you look at, as I said, you've got Ipswich, they're home to Bristol City on paper, easy enough fixture. Southampton are home to Preston on paper easy enough fixture but then when you start to cram in all the games in a short space of time form guide can kind of go out the window a little bit you know jaded legs can start to kick in and um, you can start getting some very weird performances we've seen at easter in the championship yeah. before where all of a sudden you get these really crazy results coming out of nowhere so leicester arguably the the trickier tie of the weekend i'm oh, sorry the midweek games they're away to sunderland so could be big changes this weekend you could be you could see ipswich sitting top of the table come come next this time next week is this it, the league? As daft as it sounds, there's a lot of football to be played. Mm. And left to go to Sunderland, that's no gimme. It was just against Bristol City. Bristol City, not so good away from home. Very good. So not so good at home. Very good away from home. They want, went to Middlesbrough and won. Yeah. So there's an opportunity there. And where do you say Southampton were this week? Southampton are home to Preston. Who, are, well, in Preston have been very good this year, but they yes. can, they're still a banana skin. They've still had some good performances. Absolutely, that's no gimmick. Gimme is Preston are eighth, just three mm. points off the playoff pack. So the, the these games are not well, gimmick. Exactly, and we look what Hull did at Southampton the other week and, and went there and won. So pressure does very strange things, and I always allude back to that ten man wigging game when Leeds United were cruising. We thought we'd go on and get four or five, and it all fell to pieces. And then we lost to Brentford, and that was that as far as automatic promotion goes. So. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, look, let's see where we are in three, four games' time. A lot of football to be played. Plenty of twists will happen. To me, I don't even think the table will walk, walk like this in eight, nine, ten games' time. I think it'll look a bit different. And I think Leeds United will be sat in the automatic promotion hopes. I'm very positive, and I think we'll start that with a victory tomorrow night. Yeah, I think so. We get into the team news now as well. Go through the Leeds team. Sam Byron's had 10 days back in team training. Wasn't involved in the last game as well. Likely to be involved tomorrow night with Junior Firpo nursing a bit of a calf strain, but um, he is going to be a late fitness test for that game. But Daniel Farka did say he won't risk Junior Firpo if to risk a further or worse injury after that. So you could see Sam Byron come back into the start. Jaden Anthony is out of the game with personal issues. He's going through an awful hard time personally at the moment. So thoughts are with him going through a really, really tough, tough time with him at the moment. So Fingers crossed he's okay and, and, and gets where he needs to get to. Um, Jamie Shackleton's illness has become clear. Jamie Shackleton has been suffering from concussion, which okay. explains the vomiting and the, the, the ill oh. feeling. And he's going to miss the next two games due to being out with the concussion protocol. So that's his situation. Uh, outside of that, Daniel Farkas said, lots of knocks, lots of bruises, but they're fine. We can't be soft. We've got to be tough in these situations is what he said. So... Um, that's our situation. When you look at the Stokes situation, junior attacker Mayju is out with an ankle injury. Jordan Thomas is suspended for the game. 
Enda Stevens and Ryan M.O.A. are both uh, doubts for the game. Stevens with a hamstring, M.A. with a knee injury, but they are likely to be involved in some part. And former Legion United underage player Liam McCarran is with, is with Stoke, but they haven't registered him. So he won't be, be unavailable for this game to come back and play against Leeds United. Stats, I wanted to ask you about, before we get to team selection, Daniel Farrakhan mm-hmm. made a very interesting comment, and I did like this comment actually, where he said he ha- the players need trust and backing in tough situations. He followed up by saying, but they've also got to show it in training week after week after week. That they've got to show that drive that they can't fall back on previous performances and not do the work to, you know, they will lose their places that way. With that in mind, does he stick or twist for this game? Because Dan James and Connor Roberts, when they came on at the weekend, yeah. made a big difference in that game. I personally think he'll twist. I think the reason I say that is we've got Sheffield Wednesday, what, just over 48 hours later, haven't we, in another big Yorkshire derby at Hillsborough on Friday evening. Personally, I'd like to see Connor start. I thought... Mm. Uh, again, he came off against Leicester, scored the goal, changed the game. Came on against... Uh, Put us for your talent at the weekend, set the goal up. Uh, I think Dan James might come in for Willie Nonto. The big thing for me is if Connor does start, where does that leave Archie Gray? Do you push Archie Gray back into midfield into his natural position and, and take uh, Glenn Kamara out uh, and go with Gray and Gruev? It's, uh, it's, it's very interesting choices, but you need every hand to the pump at the moment. Uh, and I think I'll probably Sam Byron will probably come in at left back by the sounds of it if, yeah. if Junior is. Uh... <laughs> I've just read Joe's comments. Uh, if yeah. if, uh, if uh, Junior Firpo doesn't play. So, yeah, I think Corrance will come in at right back. And I think we might see Archie Gray back in midfield as he was against Chelsea, where he was absolutely magnificent during the week. Yeah. I, I... I would change it for one reason. I think one of the main reasons we struggled against Huddersfield is our attack from the right and left was very similar. It's the yeah. same kind of player on both yeah. sides. It's close yeah. control, cut inside, look to shoot. And I think they doubled up and, and managed that very, very well, even with 10 players. I think what you saw with Dan James and Connor Roberts was they minimized the amount of touches. It was very fast interchange of passes, get in behind as quick as you can. Where with Cree, Junior, uh, Cree and Junior on the left Willie on the right, and then you had Georgina Rutter in the centre. There was an awful lot of overcarrying of the ball, not getting in behind, not moving the ball quick enough, and the game actually slowing down yes. to a point that if you're playing against a team playing a low block, they love that because the slower you play it, the more time we have to get in behind the ball, get organised and get our structure and pick yes. up players and get bodies behind the ball. So for me, having James and Roberts on one side and Cree and Junior or Cree and, and Sam Byron on the other yes. side is change the style of attack and then you can swap yeah. them over and back as yeah. well and that keeps the yeah. fullbacks on their toes are you going inside are you going outside are you going direct are you running at me it changes the attack for me and I think Conor Roberts has been such a lightning rod coming off the bench that he's probably due a start based on yeah. merit like he's got a goal two assists already off the bench so he's due that and I think Glenn Kamara probably had his worst game in a lead shirt and just looked a bit leggy and I keep saying this he's been so good for us all season but yeah. He didn't have a preseason, and there's times it. where it looks like it's yeah. catching up on him a little bit. And um, I could see, I could see Conor Roberts going in the right back and Archie Gray going back into midfield yeah. alongside Gruev and yeah. just Jan James on the right. I could see there be just subtle changes. I think he might have to look at the impact off the bench of, of uh, Joe Pirro as well. I'm, I'm happy to give Joe Pirro all the time in the world that he needs because he was saying it every time we judge a player too early, they prove us wrong. Sure. So I'm happy to just give him time. He's 24, give him time to get used to the team. He'll come good. He'll get some important goals before the end of the season, I'm sure of it. But I think Mateo Joseph has the confidence factor now to bring him in instead of maybe Joe Pirro as that, as that second striker off the yeah. bench for me personally. I don't know what you think about the Pirro joseph Bamford situation. I, th- I think you, you've got to start, Paddy, because he, he's scoring a lot of goals on this since the start of 2024. I think the criticism of, of Joe Pirro is, is very unfair. I think he's got a lot of important goals he stepped up against Preston in the 90-something minute, didn't he? Uh, yeah. Which could be possible one of the most important three points we get at the end of the season. It's a team game. And Joel Peru is part of the team that is, is taking Leeds United to, OK, the third at the moment, that on an on unbeaten run of 10 games, winning nine mm. of them. And we win together, we lose together, we draw together. I, I personally feel that the criticism is a little bit harsh and a little bit unfair. Uh, Joel Peru, he's, he's come from 
Swansea, a completely different part of the country. He's brought his family up and lives next door to Virginia Ruta, which must be fun at games. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, for, for me, they're all part of the team. They're all part of this squad that has got us into a magnificent position. Yeah. And like you, I'm absolutely certain Perry will, will, will be involved and will score some big, big goals between now and the end of the season. Yeah, I think he'll have his moments. So do I. I really do think he'll have a moment. I think it'll be a big moment as well. So, <clears throat> happy to wait. Happy to yeah. wait. We didn't just sign him for one year. We signed him yeah. for a longer term than that. As I <laughs> keep saying, you forget how young he is. He's 24 years exactly. of age. He's got so much time before he, we need to really see the best of him. And he'll get better under Farrakhan. No doubt with that. And no it doubt. takes place time sometimes to acclimatise to different area, different home area. And for me, he's done really well. And I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with the whole squad and I'm not one for singling out players if they have a bad game. Every player at every club in England or in the world will have an off game because it's yeah. just part and parcel of football. And for me, Piro has done what he's done. I think he's got, what, 11, 12 goals this season. Yeah. Perfectly fine for me. And if he does come off the bench, perfect. Strikers go through phases and they go Not through runs. Do. Strikers will go through games, game after game after game of scoring goals, and then they will go through runs of not scoring goals. Strikers are very Correct. much confident players, so he needs a run. He needs a couple of goals. As they, as they say, that the old saying goes, he needs one to go in off the back of his arse, and yes. then he'll be fine. He'll yes. be flying then, you know? Yes. So, yeah, just that. Okay, we get some statistics, um, stats. What have you got that we need to keep an eye out for this weekend? Uh, this interestingly, and I wasn't going to use this one. Leeds United haven't lost a Tuesday night home game since 2017, uh, when Derby County came to, to Ellen Road, when uh, Pierre Michel Lasaga uh, scored early on, and then Derby scored two late goals, and we got a penalty uh, that day. Patrick Bamford needs two goals to hit 60 uh, for Leeds United. I think moving to 22nd in the all time list of leading goal scorers for Leeds United Football Club. Looking to win three home games in a row in the league against Stoke City for the first time since 1973. Uh, they're also looking to do seven home games in a row, league wins in a row, again for the second time this season. They did seven back in 08-09 and the last time they did seven in the top two tiers was back in 99-2000 when they went up to finish third uh, in the Premier League. So, yeah, plenty to chew the fat on. Uh, they're a bit mm. of a bogey team at times, Stoke, but it's also the first time we've met the Potteries at home in the league in front of a crowd since a glorious day back in August 2018 when Marcelo Bielsa introduced himself to Leeds United and English football and I'm sure we'll take the same result again and that day uh, there was a certain Lewis Baker in the Leeds United squad who now is captain of Stoke City He's playing football which he, he didn't do it for Leeds Yes He really didn't play many games for Leeds um, yes. But yeah, he is, and by his point to prove as well although it never really felt like Lewis Baker was a Leeds player He just wasn't yeah. really yeah. Very excited about when he came in. And then yes, this and everything else, which is unfortunate I, I, for him. I but... think he came with Jamal Blackman. Uh, yeah. And it just, yeah, Blackman played one game, broke his leg, and or played a couple of League Cup games, broke his leg, and that was that. And, and Lewis Baker never really got too much of an opportunity at Leeds, a bit like Izzy Brown <laughs> when, yeah. he, when he signed at Leeds. And, uh, Only Leeds would sign a player with an ACL injury that's not, you know, it's still going through treatment of an ACL. You go, oh, yeah, yeah. bring him in anyway, be fine. Yeah. No, you yeah. won't. There you go. They're, they're, they're the players from the past. I'm sure Lewis Baker will come with a, a point to prove tomorrow night. Hmm. Yeah, the other things I saw, as you said, Pat Bamford, he has scored in each of his last three home league games. If he scores tomorrow night, it'll be the first time since 2018 that he's done four in a row. Yeah. And that was with Middlesbrough, as you said it before we came on here. There was a hat-trick against Leeds in there as well. Yes, on a freezing cold March evening at the Riverside Stadium. I think it snowed that day. I was very surprised that game went ahead. But yeah, that was a, a cold, cold night at Teesside. So, yes. And, and for us as well as a result, it was a great yes. night for us, either. Um, yeah, the Stoke best have best lost. <laughs> uh, yeah, Stoke have lost each of their last three away games as well. So, if we're not confident with this, maybe that'll make us feel a little bit yes. better. Um. And they've only won one of the last 11 league away games at least. So, yes. you know, there's, 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 there's lots of good stuff there. Reaction is needed. We have yes. had reactions this year when we've needed them. Yes. I'm confident that we bounce back from this. And again, I am confident that um, we'll be fine. I yeah. really am. So, I, I, I think we'll win this game. And I think, 
I think we'll win it at Canter. I think they'll see Stoke uh, and just even Schumacher and under fire boss. I know they've got a victory over Middlesbrough Padme at uh, the weekend. And Middlesbrough side are really dropping like a stone at the moment under Michael know, Carrick. Which, a lot of yeah. injuries. A lot of injuries. Yes. A ton of players that are injured. It's, they've got players playing in positions all over the park. I like yes. Michael Carrick as manager. I think he's a good manager. but Yes, yeah, so do I. The backside's so, fallen now since Christmas. But um, amazingly, Stoke in 22nd are only six points behind Middlesbrough in 14th. It's that tight at, at that tight. bottom of the league, basically. So there's a lot of football to be played. But yeah, it's it's a game that I, I think Leeds will win. I think the crowd will help. Uh, and I think it'll be a tremendous atmosphere under the lights. Uh, and it's one I'm very much looking forward to tomorrow night. Score-wise, what do you think? 4-0. That's a confident 4-0, Andrew. I'm- I'm confident. I think that they'll want to right the wrongs of the performance of Pert in Staffordshire early in the season. They want to get back on the horse and get back on the winning way. We're unbeaten at home in all competitions. I think 19 all season. That's a fantastic run. And I think that'll continue to tomorrow night. Yeah, I'm thinking 2-0. That'll do. 2-0. Early goal. Early yes. goal. I keep saying it. Uh, Steve's come in with a 3-1. We've got a 2-1 from Gale. I thought you were gone, Gale. I thought you'd finished up for the evening. Here <laughs> you are, hanging on, giving their score predictions. <laughs> uh, who's, uh, Enzio, do you use Visio at all? I don't. I don't. I think I think Lucky does, though. Lucky does. 3-0 uh, for Enzio. Yeah. 3-0 for Les as well. Yeah. 2-0 for Marcus. 2-0 for Chewy. Yeah. 3-0 for Stripper. Yeah. I think we'll be all right. I think we'll, we'll be okay. To... Yes. Folks, we're going to leave it there. Thanks as always. He's flyby. I love doing them. That's, that's, that's thanks as always for, for popping in and um, giving us your, your, your knowledge and your dulcet tones. We, look, we love having it. <laughs> um, right. I will be on Joe's show uh, over in Just Joe's show in 25 minutes to tell you probably the exact same stuff I've told you here, but come over for a chat anyway and have a, have a, have a chill my goodness. Um, and I will be back tomorrow morning on my own here for more Leeds news. You can check that out then. So that's massive thanks as always. See you later, folks. Thank you. Bye.